Um, I know when I first started my website, I took a very strong stance against parallels. Uh, but I know that to, to try to fight the hobby, to try to fight the, the flow of the evolution of the hobby would be a mistake on my part. Hello and welcome. Victor, the rookie card specialist here. Coming at you with another episode and wanting to just share a couple of things, uh, especially when it comes to the parallel rookie cards. I'm going to just touch on this because, you know, I, I, I made videos about this topic over a year ago, and it seems like as your channel grows, new people come to your channel and they, they start asking you questions. But they, they, they probably don't know that I've made videos on that topic um, previously. And that's kind of the problem sometimes with YouTube is when you got a channel that has like a ton of videos and you're looking for like a specific topic or a specific, I, I, I just think the search for um, YouTube channels is kind of, it, it's kind of weak actually. And so I, I just want to touch on a little bit my stand on um parallel rookie cards because i i was asked and i figured it'd be uh just a different type of uh concept as uh my previous videos are done more in a presentation type mode and the this style is a little bit more relaxed um using the stream yard and all of that i want to uh i actually went i went to a uh, white Sox game last week on saturday a saturday game against the yankees was a night game i haven't been to guaranteed rate in probably 20 years and and i live not but 30 minutes from the park to be honest with you but a group of us ended up going and we had a great time and it was a fantastic game the white Sox ended up winning three to two they they won it in the bottom of the ninth and so it was a it was a pretty really good game really good game got to give them that i wore my t-shirt um, my tops t-shirt to that game. And I was pretty shocked at how many people approached me uh, collectors um, and, and they saw the t-shirt and they high-fived and they, we just got to talking about cards and, and that sort of thing. And it happened on three separate times. And it, I thought that was pretty cool uh, to wear the tops t-shirt and, and get some hobby love like that from other collectors. I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, if you don't know, as of yet, I have been asked to participate and be a part of the team for Hobby Hotline. Um, excited to say yes to that invitation. And I'm now going to be featured on the show probably like once a month or so. But um John Newman reached out to me. He said, Hey, we were talking and we were just wondering if uh, you'd be interested in being uh, part of the show. And um, he gave us some thought. I took about a half a day to give us some thought. Just wanted to think on how I was going to navigate the time and all of that. Uh, and, I, and I looked at the roster of people who are on that team. And um, I don't know everybody, but I do know the majority of them. And it's a, uh, a group of people that I hold in, in high regard. And um, I was honored to accept that invitation. And so I'll be on Hobby Hotline um, occasionally going forward. Well, my wife got a new car finally, and uh, we were shopping for at least, it had to be five or six weeks that we were shopping for a car. And now is not the time to be shopping for a car, as I previously mentioned. However, I don't plan to buy a car um, overnight. This was two years in the making. Two years ago, the plan to get a new car in 2022 was 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 part of the plan. And we come to push, come to shove, and we had to make the decision. And I finally, finally found a uh, a dealer near me that is uh, that was willing to negotiate. And uh, I don't know if I caught them at the right time or what the deal was, but uh, we went back and forth and I ended up getting a, my wife, a 2022 Chevy trailblazer in crimson red. And we got the 
the the sport package on it. And here's something I realized as I was purchasing this vehicle for my wife. The Trailblazer line has many different colors. It has many different parallels. In other words, you can get it in a different type of trim that has just a little bit more design element to the vehicle. And so when I was going through the purchase of the card, I was reminded of parallel rookie cards. And, and that has helped me, uh, I guess, soften my stance. Um, I know when I first started my website, I took a very strong stance against parallels. Uh, but I know that to, to try to fight the hobby, to try to fight the, the flow of the evolution of the hobby would be a mistake on my part. So that is now that chapter of our lives is now closed. Well, parallel rookie cards. Let's get into that for a little bit. I'm going to share with you, I guess, my view. I'm just going to give you my view, and then I'm going to tell you why I feel this way. But my view is straight up. I feel parallel rookie cards are a variant. I feel that they are a copy of the original. And because of that, I don't view them as true rookie cards. I want you to know that I do own some. I have plenty of... Um, rookie cards of parallel rookie cards in my collection. And the thing is, is that they're not the focus of my PC. They're a part of my PC, but they are not the focus of my PC. My focus is on true rookie cards. In other words, base rookie cards. In other words, base rookie cards that fall into compliance with rookie card guidelines, past and present. That is my stance on where, what I like from my collection. Now, why do I feel that way? Because I think, realistically, I think parallel rookie cards have been an issue of debate within the hobby for decades. They first came out in the 1980s with Tiffany sets, and they evolved in 1991 when um, Desert Shield came out. Uh, it was a, a, a special set that Tops made for the military, and they stamped a little Desert Shield emblem on it. Other than that, they are identical to the to the parallel base set. Um, Ninety two Tops came out with um, Tops Gold, and and those were parallel cards featured in Ninety two, and then in nineteen ninety four. Upper Deck comes out with Electric Diamond parallels, and they were stamped in silver and or gold and so that is the history of parallel rookie cards that started back in the late 80s and early 90s but here's the thing back then you see because this became a topic of discussion within the hobby and it was the hobby had decided back then that parallel rookie cards are not considered true rookie cards. And it was that way for a long time. Uh, I, I recently heard an interview with Nat Turner uh, when he was on Sports Card Live with Jeremy Lee. And Jeremy Lee asked him, you know, what's his take on, on parallel rookie cards? And even Nat Turner says, man, I remember, you know, back in the 90s and early 2000s, you know, parallel rookie cards were not really, they were really frowned upon, to be honest with you. And if, and he went on telling the story on, on the regret that he feels that he was he didn't collect parallel rookie cards back in the early 2000s. And he wished he had, but he didn't because those were typically frowned upon and those were not really included as, as true rookie cards. So just case in point, how historically... Parallel rookie cards have not been considered true rookie cards up until 2008 is when the hobby started changing. And, and now, you know, as of like 2016, 2017, they have completely like taken over. Uh, but here's the thing. You got old guys like myself coming back to the hobby and everything is parallel. Uh, and it's like, wow, wait a minute here. 
uh, time out here. What's going on? And so that causes a little bit of, of a rub with, with me anyways. And so it's like, it's like when you get a new guy at work, they come in and they're, 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 they're full of ambition and, and, and gusto. And they're, they, they kind of like, they've been on the job maybe one or two months and they're going to try to tell the old head that's been there for 20, 30 years. They're going to try to tell him how to do his job. It's, it's one of them things that the, the culture shock of uh, the way it's always been done and the way it is now, it is different. And so as an older collector, we, we have to adapt. We have to um, come to terms with the change, but we still have the freedom to make our own choices when it comes to purchases. And I, I, I understand like, the younger guys, it's, you know, I, I ask that you, you realize kind of where we're at and kind of where you're at and understand that, you know, parallels has not never, you know, it hasn't been the thing always it's, it's been the thing recently and we can't just disregard, um, hobby history, or we can't disregard the older collectors and kind of like ostracize them. No, we, we need to come together. We're, we're all collectors. And um, I, I think that's that's the healthy way to look at things. That's the reality of it. The reality is that parallel rookie cards have been an, a topic of debate within the hobby for decades. Now, another reality about parallel rookie cards is that there's too many different types. And I think this is where the saturation of the market is happening. My always my contention has been with this big backlog with PSA and all of the other grading companies. My question has been, could the parallel rookie card be the cause of so of this backlog? And, and I really when you think about it logically, it, it, it very well can be. I think they are the reason for the backlog. And when you think about like 2019, 2020 basketball. You know, they had Prism had 40 parallel cards. Optic had 36 different types of parallels, and that's only in two products. Now, they make 40 products, give or take, somewhere in there. Can you imagine the, the amount of parallels sitting at these uh, grading companies? And, you know, those are the ones everybody's going to send in a parallel. Heck, they send in the base cards. What do you think they're going to do with the parallels? They're going to send them in, and that could be the very reason for the backlog. Now, why do card companies do this? I've given this a lot of thought, and I believe it's um, the reason why they, they do this is because it allows them to print more product, and it really is a, a cost-effective way to bring value to the box, to bring value for collectors when they open up packs. It's a lot cheaper to create a parallel card. I'm assuming now it's a lot cheaper to create a parallel when all you got to do is change a little bit of the element in the computer or the printer or what have you, instead of having to go buy Jersey material, authentic game used Jersey material or authentic game used relics and have those cut up in little tiny pieces and put together in the cards. And, and that's a lot more labor intensive. And so it makes perfect sense then on the, the on the mid range product uh, or to, to create parallel cards. Uh, but the thing is back in the nineties, there was only like one, or two and then in 94 you know there was upper deck they had the the silver and the gold and then in the late 90s it kind of went to 10 to 12 parallels and in 2004 or 2003 with lebron james lebron james has over 155 different parallels and and now today it, it's um i was looking up at shohei otani's parallel cards he has 216 parallel rookie cards, and we'll get to Shohei here in a minute. Uh, but another reality is, is that there's just too many different types of parallel rookie cards today, and it's saturating the market, and it's really, um, it, it's really 
leading into my third reality is, is that they're diluting the value of the base rookie card. And, and the base rookie card is to the point where it's almost ignored or mistreated or looked down upon as less than, less than worthy. And, and so it is a necessary evil though. How, how can you have a parallel if you don't have a base? So it, it's almost like a necessary evil to have the base rookie card. But when you look at hobby history, you'll notice that, you know, the rookie card, the base rookie has primarily been the main thing. And now today that's not so much the case. And so I guess my point is, you know, do your homework and, and, and what you're going to realize is that many of them, I, I don't want us to get deceived with the parallels because when you, when you look at the secondary market values, they're not, they're not as valuable as you think they are. Now, granted, the scarce ones are like anything below 25. And that's the, what your, your reds, your oranges and your platinums. And, and those, yeah, anything less than 25 is going to have some tremendous value because of the scarcity, but even parallels today of good players that, that, that are, that have, uh, that are numbered up to 99 or 199 or 299. They don't have as much value as you think they do. And I would think that they should would. <clears throat> and here's the thing, even though I have my belief, I have come to terms that, as a content creator, as a website that, that features true rookie cards, I have acknowledged that parallel rookie cards are rookie cards. Now, I've acknowledged that, that the hobby has acknowledged it. As far as me and my personal collection, they're not, they're, like I said before, they're not my focus. And as, as, as for me and my collection, I don't really consider them rookie cards. Now, are they good, you know, if I pull one? you know, great to sell and maybe recoup some funds. Yeah. I'll sell my parallels all day. Uh, but I'm more jealous about my base rookie cards. And so I want to show you an article. One of my latest articles on my website. And the, the name of the article is Shohei Otani tops rookie cards, a comprehensive look. And so what I did is I went ahead and I, I featured all of his rookie cards along with the parallels and the inserts. And this is a very extensive list that I'm showing you here. And as you look at it, and, and the reason why, I know I made a video and I said in my video at the end of my presentation, I said that Shohei Otani had 27 true rookie cards and when I looked at that comment that they left me and I researched it, I was shocked to see that my figure was incorrect. And the figure is more like 36. Well, what happened? Well, my, the question that I received was, what about his tops image variants? And I, as I looked into that, I said, oh, man, that's right. My stance on image variant rookie cards is that they are true rookie cards so long as the card back is the same and the card number is the same well as i researched the tops image variants i realized that they are true rookie cards and then as i dug a little bit deeper and i looked at all product well he has a ton of product that has image variant rookie cards in it and so i completely I did it with the help of Beckett database and with the help of uh, baseball cardpedia. I looked up every single product, every single card that was created in 2018 of Shohei Otani. And here are my new figures. As you see here in bold, I have, there's 36 base rookie cards and that's including the image variants. He has 216 parallel rookie cards and 405 rookie year cards. When I say rookie year cards, I am referring to insert cards, insert cards that are plastered with a rookie card logo 
when historically the hobby doesn't consider insert cards as rookie cards. So with that said, I took it in alphabetical order and I give you here a picture of both front and back. And here you see parallels. And I consider the parallels rookie cards. That's why I have it in quotations here. And there I feature all of the rookie cards or parallels. I'm sorry. And then inserts. I also give you the inserts because I get it. Hey, inserts are pretty fun too. There's nothing wrong with collecting inserts. Um, but when I'm identifying and trying to make sense of all of this mass of rookie cards, no, there, there has to be some form of structure and, 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 Insert cards, I consider rookie year cards. And here I do the same with every single, the same concept with every single card. Really nice. If that's something you're interested in, check that out. If you like this type of content, as far as this type of um, comprehensive breakdown of rookie cards, let me know and I'll start making my articles this way going forward. My thing is, uh, you know, this took me like three weeks to do. And, it, I, you know, I didn't work on it all the time. I worked on it periodically an hour or two here and there. Uh, but I got a, you know, it. I've got about 20 to 30 man hours involved in creating this one article. But I felt inspired to do it. And I felt that it was that important that I wanted to do a, a massive breakdown of Shohei's rookie cards. Now here in the Bowman Chrome, you see um, the base card to the left and the card to the right is the image variant. Okay. And I give you a little bit of write up there and I, and I share with you all of the parallel cards and all of the inserts. And here again, more image variants, you get the picture and look at, look at the inserts on inside of Bowman's best. Here's Bowman's best. Here are all his parallel rookie cards. Look at the inserts. That's quite a bit. And the, uh, it's just a great piece of content in my opinion. So let me know on that. Give me some feedback on that. If that's something you find valuable, I don't want, if the hobby doesn't think it's valuable, I'm not going to waste my time with it. I, you know, we'll do something else. We'll try something different, but I wanted to create a different type of article than the typical ones that I do and wanted to feature parallels and, and variations and inserts and that sort of thing. Well, hey, listen, that's going to be all for me today. Just wanted to share you guys a little bit of my view of parallel rookie cards. I wanted to share with you the article on Shohei Otani uh, and, and don't forget to vote on the Baseball Card Hall of Fame, that is still going on up until June 3rd. The The link to the ballot, I'm going to leave in the description, of course. And you still have time to vote. June 3rd at 11.59 p.m. is the deadline. I hope you can consider voting. Until next time, guys, I'll catch you on the next one.